Hi everybody. Uh, welcome back to part two of my Universal Tire Care Kit build. If you haven't watched part one yet, then you missed all the stuff here. So you might want to go back and watch the first so you know what's going on. There's a link to that up here or in the video description. And for everybody else, this is where we left off last time. The anti-wobble assembly and the arms. Today, we're going to be putting together the hinge assembly for the swing arm, the vertical wheel plate tube, and installing the diagonal support. So let's jump right back into the build. So now that we have our DOM hinge attached to our swing arm tube, uh, next is to uh, completely assemble the hinge assembly. Uh, and that is made up of the hinge bracket. Uh, this is what you see here. Um, if you bought the build kit, um, this is what you get. Also comes with uh, two washers and a uh, bolt. And then you got two uh, flange bushings as well. And you have your nylon uh, lock nut. So let's do a quick assembly on that guy real quick. So we'll go with the uh, bushings in first. Slide it through. Um, if it's tight, um, over time, the bearings will kind of um, where it's uh, break in. And you can use a, a rubber mallet to kind of position it. And then we're going to put our flat washer over our bolt. And then knock it in there. And then our flat washer on the bottom. And then loosely tighten up our nut. So that right there uh, makes up the hinge assembly. Next, we're gonna grab our, our long fixed arm tube. Uh, you can see there are actually two sides. One has this like uh, really long seam. Um, I like that to be facing the bumper so I don't see it when I swing open. So we'll have the nice clean side up. And then we're gonna take our uh, assembly here and put it over. And you can see it's kind of leaning down a little bit uh, to get the correct spacing. What I like to do is take the uh, bent bracket that comes with the kit and you'll have this um, other piece that came with the kit which is the uh, bracket spacer for this guy here. So if you add these two together, the, they add up to half an inch. And then uh, usually uh, when you put that in between the two tubes, that is gonna give you the correct spacing underneath. Um, you may need to play around with it to figure out which um, it's gonna give you an even gap, whether it be half an inch or five eighths. Um, the main thing is to make sure that the spacing is the same and that these two tubes are parallel with one another. Uh, now that we have that spacing complete, uh, next is to jig this guy up so that these two tubes are square at one another because we're gonna um, uh, tack the hinge in place. So grab a square, make sure it's flat with the back side um, on both tubes. And then I like to use one, two, three blocks, but it's not totally necessary. Um, you can use uh, your square if you want, but you mainly want to uh, make sure these two are on the same, same face. So, you know, take your time on this, make sure that um, it's nice and squared here and then here and so that because you're going to uh, tack this in and you want to make sure that um, if it, it swings out on the same level. Let's do some fine tuning there. I like what I see. Um, the gap is good all the way across. Like I said, you know, half inch is a good starting point, um, but you want to make sure the spacing is about the same. Okay, I like what we see now. So let's clamp it all down that's good there that's good there and when you clamp it all down and if you cut the tubes correctly you should have about you know a quarter inch clearance here okay let's tack this guy in place
And you guys can probably already know this by now. Um, I like to tack everything in place um, before I completely weld it in, um, just to ensure fitment. Um, and if I, something's off, I can always break the tacks off. So uh, we will fully weld this in. It's just, uh, I'll show you when we need to do that later down in the video. Okay, I think that's good there. Now you can see the arm is swinging open like so and closes like so. Cool. Uh, all right, that completes um, the fit up for the hinge bracket. Uh, next we're gonna install the, so next we're gonna install the uh, spring plunger. Um, it's pretty much this guy here and then you have your spring plunger spacer. So uh, for us to do it, um, this actually comes off, so you can unscrew it. Oh, get some, let me get some pliers real quick. So the knob portion threads off, but when you go back to reinstall it after you paint the whole thing, you'll wanna put some Loctite on it, so but I'll show you that down the road. Then you have the shaft and then you have the uh, nut that goes on top. So we're gonna take this uh, plunger spacer and we're gonna weld it to the body of the plunger. And we're just gonna get it centered from the top and bottom. And we're just gonna tack that guy real quick in place. So you can see it kind of lifted up on us right there. So I'm gonna clamp that guy down real quick or grind it off and, and make sure that it's flush. What I should have done was just take one of these clamps and just clamp like this and that would have solved all my problems. <laughs> so don't do what I did, do this. Okay, and then we'll tack that guy in place. So it looks a lot better now. And then for this piece, we can uh, fully weld it in. And because this uh, plunger will be going somewhere right here, um, it's gonna be hard to access um, this uh, air to weld. So we're gonna weld that in now fully. So let's do that real quick. But before we weld this up, uh, we want to take the bronze bearings out because they're, these guys are oil embedded. If we weld this, it'll heat up this whole DOM and, and pretty much dry out this flange. So let's take that out real quick. Okay, now that we have the, the flange and bushings out, um, I'll just take some anti-spray spray it on there so that spatter doesn't get everywhere. Okay, we're gonna let that cool down um, as well as the plunger body um, before we uh, start welding that guy up. It's cooled, um, let's reinstall the, the bushings. Now that we put the hinge assembly back together, uh, let's uh, make everything back to square as far as getting the two tubes. All right, so let's reassemble this plunger real quick. Okay, it's good there. So how we are we gonna position it is, see this little cutout right here? Uh, we're gonna take this guy and we're gonna place it like that. And you, when you place it, you wanna have you know, some clearance around. Uh, let me just uh, get a better angle real quick. So we want this plunger uh, perpendicular and you can see 
that spacer pushes it up so that you're gonna align it right there. So this is kind of where you want it. You kind of want a little bit of gap around. You don't want it like this where it's pressed against it. So something like that works. And you also wanna make sure that the plunger is perpendicular as well. And you also wanna make sure that this plunger is not all the way down like that. I like to make it um, flush with the bottom of the bracket as far as the, uh, the plunger shaft. So let me get this all jigged up real quick and we're gonna weld this uh, plunger in. Um, we're gonna tack it first and then, then we're gonna take out the, uh, the knob and the plunger so that uh, you know the knob doesn't melt. So. Okay, I like that. I like where that is. And it's nice and straight. Let's lay another tack. And you should be able to move your plunger freely without any obstruction. So, and it should be up like that. And before we weld it in, completely. Uh, let's open it up real quick and see if it locks in the, uh, the 115 degree uh, point. So to open it, we're going to pop the plunger up. So far so good. It's riding, not rubbing. And then, yep, boom, locks in place. And that's what we want before we fully weld it in. Okay, I like where that sits. And, um, okay, so kind of want to go over the um, spring plunger real quick. Uh, it's totally optional. I recommend it. Um, you'll never know when you'll want to open the swing arm open and lock it in position and not have to worry about the swing arm coming back down on you. Uh, so, but I wanted to kind of show you, you know, why you have these features here and here. So when the swing arm is closed and it's at rest, um, it's actually in the lock position. So for some reason, if your, uh, your latch fails and it tries to swing open, you can see it can't because it's locked in place. Um, I did that on purpose because I didn't want like a second locking pin like with the lanyard that you had to take in and out. But you know, it can be annoying sometimes having it like this because when you pop the latch open, uh, you might forget that uh, it's in the lock position, but you get pretty much used to it. So if the latch fails, um, won't be able to open either way. So that's kind of a safety feature. And then this open, you know, I guess it's open around this slot here is so that when you pop it open, um, you can ride it freely up to the 90 degree position as far as the arm. And then if you pull the pin up even more, it locks there and that is the maximum uh, opening. Uh, and that opening there is uh, 115 degrees. Now, if you don't have this pin locked, and you just remove it, you can actually open up the uh, swing arm, you know, up to 180. But so it's user preference. Um, if you don't like any of these features and you only want just the pin lock here, you don't, you don't want that safety lock there, you can actually just notch this out and this out and this whole piece will come out. And this way, when you open up, open up the latch, you don't have to worry about pop the pin open, it'll just keep freely spinning, uh, freely, it'll just um, uh, freely open. And then the only time you need to pull it up is when you get to the, uh, the pin hole at the 150 degree point. So I kind of just wanted to quickly go over what's going on there. But I think it's a good thing to have. But like I said, it's personal preference. Okay, so I like how it's locking that 
Cool. So now I'm gonna take all this out and fully weld it in. Okay, let's fully weld in the, um, the spring plunger body. And it's also probably a good idea to spray some anti-spatter because I don't want it to go inside the, the plunger body. All right, so we could probably finish welding up everything that's connected to the DN1 tube. So let's finish welding that guy up. All right, so that guy's done. And yeah, we could probably uh, finish also welding up the uh, hinge bracket as well. So let's do that. All right, so you can see we fully welded it all the way around. And so when we weld it, it's, um, Based off the heat, it's gonna to wanna to make this bracket wanna bend out like that. It's not a, that's not really a problem because uh, once we get our hinge piece back in and the bolt and the nut, we'll be able to cinch that guy back. So just wanted to note that. First thing you're gonna do is jig up your anti-wobble assembly that we tacked up earlier like this. You can see the anti-wobble is overhanging off the table and that pretty much the auxiliary hitch is sitting flat against the table. So make sure you jig it up like that first, clamp it down, and then uh, next we're gonna move on to the fixed arm and how we're gonna attach that to the um, 45 degree offset tube. So let's check out the uh, build plans real quick, how we're gonna do that. So, okay, so I got my measurement on how we're gonna jig this up. Let's put that aside. So. You want to slide it over to your piece. Um, you can see here um, that it's sitting way too low. So grab your wheel plate, your spacer, and your bent bracket. And then the, uh, the two cap off plates that came with the kit. So you'll have all this that came with the kit. Uh, as you can see, I kind of like using uh, components of the kit to jig everything in place. So essentially, uh, we need to raise this guy up uh, half an inch. And to do that, we have our pieces. So uh, so you have your, uh, your spacer and you have your bent bracket. Let's move that away. So we'll put that there, and one there, and we'll put the wheel plate here. And then two of these uh, cap off plates there. And then take the fixed arm and place that on like that. Jig it up, make sure it's sitting on there. So that's going to elevate this fixed arm tube so that it sits, it sits flush with the uh, 45 degree offset tube. And then next, uh, at the end of this uh, tube here, it should be flush with the uh, reinforcement collar of the uh, auxiliary hitch. So let's make that flush real quick. Fudge it a little bit. All right, so that's where we want it. Uh, to make sure that this tube is sitting um, uh, level, uh, I'll get my square here and just line it up just to make sure that that is good like that. Uh, let me bring over the camera real quick so you can see that. All right, hope you can see that there. So we don't want this tube to be like this. So we're gonna take our guy here, make sure it's flush. That, like that. Check to make sure, use a ruler or something, something flat where you can just grab it and go. This is the most scientific way, but you're gonna get pretty close. Once that's good there, uh, we can use our clamps, 
clamp it down, hold it in place. Uh, you can use magnets, you know, whatever you have access to. Okay, sitting flat, I like that. It's flush here. And let's grab our one, two, three blocks real quick. And it should be flush here as well. So that's good there. And for this guy, uh, we're just gonna loosely tack this in um, just in case I need to make adjustments to the fixed arm as far as length. Uh, if I have to trim it shorter, I'll be, I wanna be able to break off those tacks very quickly and um, make that cut and then re-weld it. Okay, I like what we have here. It's all nice and squared. Uh, so let's tack it in real quick. So we're gonna lay a tack um, like right there and like one right there. So just maybe one or two or maybe two or three. Actually, we'll just do one more. Also, one other way to clamp it too, if you don't have like a, a fixturing table like this, is to take your tube here, kind of offset it off the table where the uh, bracket hangs on the side. And this way you can lay your uh, tube flat and lay this piece flat. And then you get your one, two, three blocks and then clamp it to the edge of the table. So I'm gonna show you that way as well. And also, once you get these tacked in, uh, one thing you also want to measure for is uh, making sure this guy is level. Uh, sometimes uh, when you weld this offset tube, it can be slightly skewed. So what we do is take a tape measure, measure from here, measure from here. You should get about uh, the same measurement. If you're off by, you know, eighth of an inch to sixteenth, you should be fine. If you're off by more, I actually recommend you uh, breaking off the tacks and uh, adjusting it uh, to whatever uh, angle you need so that uh, you're level on both sides. So make sure you check that as well. All right, next we're just gonna uh, reassemble the hinge and the swing arm tube. Um, and this is a good point to stop and walk it over to your car and do another test fit to see how it swings open and closed and to see if it clears your lift gate or your tailgate or whatever that's uh, obstructing it. Um, and it's also a good way to see if the tube is too long or if it's too short. If it's too short, then yeah, you got to make a new tube. But most of the times um, I like to oversize my tubes on purpose. And if it's too uh, long or sticking too far out uh, to the right, what I'll end up doing is I'll break the tacks off, take this whole piece out with the swing arm and the fixed arm and then just take it over to the bandsaw and just cut off this end here. Uh, and then that way you can actually shift this whole thing to the right, making it shorter. But uh, we're gonna put it all back together real quick and do another quick test of it. And I like to tighten it up so there's no, there's no, um, there's no slop. Like I said, the, uh, the bushings that are inside will eventually kind of break in. And so you may want to adjust this over time. But yeah, I like that. Let's take it over to the car. So you can kind of see it's in line right here. I think uh, this is a good starting point, um, but let's, uh, let's open it up real quick. And you can kind of clearly see here, um, it clears this no problem. Um, I could probably make it about an inch shorter or two if I wanted to, to be about right here because 
uh, nothing's gonna hit right here. See, that your swing arm is uh, pretty clear aw away from the uh, lift gate, but but yeah, I could probably shorten it about an inch or two. So if that's the case, um, break off the tacks, uh, put your spacers in here, take this whole um, arm assembly, take it over to your chop saw, your bandsaw, and trim an inch off here, and then slide everything over. All right, so next we're gonna move over to the wheel mount assembly. Um, this consists of these uh, components here. Uh, this is the wheel tube stand bracket. Um, this is the uh, universal uh, wheel plate. And this is the uh, telescopic wheel tube receiver. And this is the receiver itself that goes inside. And this is the uh, vertical uh, wheel mount. Um, this doesn't come with the kit. Uh, this is something that you'll need to purchase uh, separate. And the reason why is because um, every car is gonna be a little bit different because um, this length of this tube is gonna be determined by how big of a size tire wheel combo you have. So in this particular case, um, if you're running a 35 inch max tire, uh, the longest I would make this tube is 17 inches. And then you can just do the math. So if you do like a 34, maybe an inch shorter um, and, and so forth. Uh, but yeah, this is something you have to buy separate just because lengths vary. Last, uh, you also need to get a bolt that matches your uh, wheel stud of your car. These are the components. And we're gonna, um, uh, I'm gonna go through how to put this all together. All right, so how we're gonna jig this up is you're gonna get your long vertical mount tube and your receiver tube here. Um, and then, as you can see, the theme is we're using our parts that came with the kit to space everything. And so let's take the uh, bracket, put it underneath, and the wheel plate underneath. And that should space this up so that we uh, weld this to the center of this tube here. Okay. So next, we're gonna attach the uh, wheel tube stand bracket, which is this guy here. Um, you can see there's uh, on the, a longer tab and a shorter tab. Um, what we're gonna do is make sure that uh, the longer tab is facing out this way. So uh, you don't want it to, you don't wanna weld it like this, where you have the shorter tab. Uh, you want it the, the longer tab this way to jig this guy up so that this guy is centered with this is you're gonna take again your wheel plate and your uh, this is the wheel tube stand bracket spacer that also comes with the kit so when you add these two together uh, you're about half inch And that's that, guys. So you see there, so maybe this is a better view. You got the longer tab here, the shorter tab here, and the tube is facing like this. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is uh, assemble the wheel plate to the receiver tube and install the one wheel stud to the universal wheel plate. Uh, but before we do that, I kinda wanna talk about it real quick. Um, you can see, um, this one hole here is to weld in your stud. Um, instead of having you know three or two welded in, one's gonna be good just because uh, when you are going to install your, your tire, it's easier to align it with one versus three different studs that are welded in. So only one gets welded in. Um, and another thing about this wheel plate is you, you see we have a cutout here. That is so that 
it makes it easy to align the receiver tube inside. And then you also have your, your slots, and these are to fit a few different wheel patterns um, that I spec'd out. Um, it's pretty universal, but uh, check out my website for exactly which ones I spec out. Um, if you don't see yours, um, just shoot me a message um, in the comments and I'll see if I can make a custom one to match yours. But yeah, I just wanna to show you the features of this uh, universal wheel plate. And then next, uh, there's two ways to mount this uh, wheel plate onto the receiver tube. Um, some people want the tire to be um, you know, perpendicular or straight up. Um, some, you know, want that lean and you can tilt it, you know, whatever angle you want. I left enough slop in there. Um, I think right there is about 10 or 15 degrees. Um, I like to be a little subtle. So I'll, I'll, with this particular build, I'll go at least, you know, five degrees and then weld that in place. So um, it's really up to um, user preference. All right. So I think the first thing we're gonna do is tack up the receiver tube to the wheel plate. And then, and then from, from there, we can um, uh, tack up the, uh, the wheel stud. Okay, what I like to do is take the uh, wheel plate, have it flat against the table, get your receiver tube, and put it like so. And then with this one, I wanna have a little bit of lean. And so uh, in the kit, um, we have these little uh, cap off uh, pieces. These are eighth of an inch thick. Um, to get the, the lean I want, I guess, I'm gonna kinda, kinda guesstimate by sliding it on the front face here. That's gonna kick it up like that, so that, that's the correct orientation. And then, depending on what angle I want, I can just slide this down. And um, you can get your uh, digital angle finder and figure out what angle you want. So this here is about five degrees. So let's uh, square that up real quick, make sure everything, this tube is centered. And then we're gonna uh, tack that guy in place. And if you want more of an angle, you know, just keep stacking plates until you achieve uh, whatever angle you want for the wheel plate. And the angle is mainly to, um, some people like the tire to kind of match their tailgate um, as far as the, uh, the curve or the angle of the tailgate. Um, so that's kind of why that angle is there. Now that we have this thing squared, I'm gonna tack it in. All right, so your tube should look something like this. And it's okay that this is sticking out like that because uh, your wheel hub on your wheels, you should clear that no problem. All right, so the next thing to do is weld in your wheel stud or your bolt that matches the uh, thread and pitch of whatever car you have. Um, if you don't know, just do a quick Google search on your car as far as wheel studs. And here I'm just using a bolt. This is an M, I believe it's an M12 by 1.5. Um, that fits my four, uh, 4Runner or Toyotas in general. Um, but, I'll, but yeah, just double check. It's about 40 millimeters long, so make sure we, whenever, whatever bolt you get, it's at least 40 millimeters long. And you can see I already grinded off the cadmium plate so, I, so for, for a proper weld up. So uh, you can see when you put this in, it's a little bit loose, so you'll wanna center it as best as you can. Um, it's just loose because um, I oversized this hole to, to fit um, larger thread size, like an M14. So, cause some cars have that, so. So we're gonna get our washers. And get our lug nut. And this is just there just to, to tighten it down. Okay. And how I like to center this is, I like to take the point on the hex and have it vertically face up this way. And I'll just kind of eyeball it and go, all right, I think that's center. So, and then next, we are going to tack that guy in place. Yeah. 
Yep, and that's good enough. Um, if there's a little bit, of, if it's not right in the center, it's not gonna be a big deal. I left enough um, clearance in these slots to, to clear when you um, bolt up your two other bolts here. But yeah, that's that. And I forgot to mention, um, you can weld this side up of the tube. Um, I think, you know, having the back side is more than enough. But if you wanna, you know, clean that up, you can weld that up. It's because I like where that's at. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fully weld that guy up. All right, it's, it's good. All right, so you can kind of see how it's gonna work. Um, this is your vertical wheel mount with the uh, telescopic tube. And this guy here is gonna slide in like so. So you can kind of see we are kind of like pre-building like each component. Um, I, I'm doing it this way just because I guess I built a few to figure out like what's the most efficient way to do this and easiest to follow, I guess. Um, so hopefully that helps. Um, you can see we have our, our wheel plate mount stuff and the vertical tube, and then we have the whole complete uh, swing arm tube. So essentially what we're gonna do is mount it like this, and, and then slide it in like, like that. So that's how it's gonna be kind of put together. So just kind of wanted to show you that ahead of time. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is um, install our spacer. This is part of the kit. Um, this is the this is the uh, spacer for the uh, the uh, bent bracket here. So um, it's gonna go on the uh, swing arm tube and sit like that. So why we need that spacer is we're gonna put our wear pad underneath and um, we needed to space it up so that it wears on that versus the steel. So. Let's jig this up real quick. So to get the alignment right, um, the bracket here is gonna be flush with the tube here. So slide that until it's flush along with the, um, the spacer. So just like that. All right, so next we are going to um, uh, install the diagonal support. Um, this is pretty much to uh, uh, stiffen up the vertical mount when you have the wheel. Um, there's a, a few different tubes you can use. You can use uh, square tubing, um, you can use round tubing, um, you can even use round tubing with the bend. Um, uh, but either way it would work and it doesn't have to go all the way from here to here, um, it can go from here to here if you wanted to. Um, but because I have a tube bender, um, I'm gonna use some round tube just cause it aesthetically looks good. And we're pretty much gonna, it's gonna mount up to here. So let's take this guy off here. See that? So it's gonna mount right here to the center of the receiver tube. And so something like that. So uh, let's get that guy tacked in place. And uh, that, all, that goes on the, um, the swing arm too, not the uh, fixed arm, just, just FYI, so. All right, I think we're reaching that 40 minute mark again. So this means end of part two. Next time I'll be putting together the wear pad, the latch, the bump stop, and some other minor stuff. And of course, uh, you'll finally see this thing in action. And I will demonstrate all these features in detail. So make sure to stop by again. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in part three.